The train was pulling in. Idaho Slim never tired of the spectacle. Black smoke from the locomotive's onion-shaped stack boiled out. Massive brakes groaned. The brass bell on the boiler swang and clanged. He smelled charred wood and singed grease. White steam shot sideways from relief valves, curled around the driving wheels, and whisked from the devious chambers and piping of the engine's inner organs. There was more. Down the steps from the first Pullman car, two resplendent figures stepped. The first, a solid man in fringe buckskins, Appaloosa boots, and sombrero, paused on the second step and smiled until the lowering sun glinted on his gold-framed tooth. His companion, a slender woman in beaded denim with hammered silver and turquoise gauntlets, glanced and grimaced at the town. She lifted her hat, exposing a violent shock of red hair, then turned to reboard the train. The man in the sombrero grasped her sleeve and gently turned her round. Calmate, sonrisa, the solid man said. Slim had worked with them many times before, Miguel Sands and Sonrisa Smiley Callahan. Miguel was better known. Bosses throughout the West knew enough to hire him when a crucial bit of authenticity was needed. His business card said simply, Miguel Sands, Gravitas. <laughs> Smiley wasn't as well known, but bosses who appreciated true reflexive violence with an overlay of, overlay of wit and intelligence paid extra for Callahan and insurance. As Miguel, clutching Smiley's arm, dropped to the platform, Timmy, the town gimp, mustered himself. His shoulders pumped around his ears. Mexicans, Timmy hissed. Miguel turned, loosing Smiley's arm. Slim had seen this before, but he always marveled. Miguel could play 30 to 70, five foot four to six feet six, simply by gesture and nuance. Now he played at large, and his voice swelled as well. New Mexicans, Miguel said. His voice was cultured and crisp, which made sense, since he'd spent years teaching elocution in New England prep schools before turning to a life of crime. <laughs> New Mexicans, he repeated, from New Mexico, that land of enchantment that you will never know. Certainly a better state than this state of disarray. His pause was measured and pearly, more devastating than the spoken words, accompanied as it was by that dismissive flick of his hand. Timmy would have crumpled even if Smiley hadn't shot him. Smiley never spoke, but thoughtfully aimed and grazed the gimp in his other good leg. The gimp stayed in character, arcing as he flew through the air, a move guaranteed to, to impress the bosses. Slim stepped up. Howdy, Mig. Smiley. Glad to see your tempers ain't linked any. The three stepped off the platform, arrayed themselves equally across the span of the street, and prepared for the long stroll to the bank. They matched strides as they'd done many times before. Sometimes it was the hike to the fork, sometimes the saunter to the corral outside of town. Once they'd split up and sidled down alleys after the marshal. As they neared the saloon, Slim spotted a rifle barrel edging out of the corner window on the second floor of the hotel. I got it, Miguel said. Miguel fired across his chest without breaking stride, and the rifle barrel kicked up and fell backward. The rifleman fired as he fell, and the bullets sailed harmlessly skyward. But oddly, each bullet ricocheted, or at least made a peculiar keening whine that lingered. They looked at each other. Ah, oh, Jesus, Smiley Callahan said. You think you're going to do a movie and you end up in a goddamn film. 